Hello friends, welcome back. I'm so excited you're here. We're going to try something a little bit different today. We're going to focus on looking at an experiment that I perform in my fermentation class in our awesome biotechnology program. We are actually going to be creating yogurt, which is a fermented milk product. And then the awesome thing is that we get to eat it after we're done. So let's get to it. So in my fermentation class, we focus on making a lot of different fermented foods, which is really fun. And there's a lot of really interesting research right now showing that when you eat fermented foods, meaning foods that have been broken down and processed by either yeast or microorganisms like bacterial species, that it helps your body, it helps your overall health. Um, so we know that there are normal flora, bacterial cells that live in your GI system, and when you eat these fermented foods, it helps to supplement those. Um, there's also some really interesting research going around now about the microbiome, and the microbiome are the bacteria that live inside of you, also on your skin, and there's a lot of research showing that not only does the fermented foods help with that, um, but these microbiomes are shown to be important for mental health as well. So it's really interesting, lots of cool stuff going on right now. So we're going to focus today on actually making yogurt. So yogurt is a fermented milk product, um, and we're going to look at how we do that. The uh, microorganisms that are traditionally used to ferment the milk are streptococcus and lactobacillus. Those are the two major um, species of microorganisms that are used. You can use other ones as well to increase um, the flavor, change the flavor, or increase the amount of um, probiotics, the good bacteria that are going into your gut. So we're going to look at this. And another thing to think about too is creating your own fermented foods at home is really fun, also very easy. And I think about this a lot. I'm a mother, I'm a scientist, and I like to think about creating foods and feeding foods to my kids that are clean. Clean meaning not a lot of preservatives and I know where all the components come from. So that's a good thing, but we also can save a lot of money by doing that too. So think about, so when you go to buy these yogurt cups at the store, they're a dollar or more per cup and I can actually create six to eight of these from a half to a full gallon of milk, which is an amazing savings. So two major benefits of making your own fermented foods at home, you save a lot of money, which is awesome, but you also know exactly what you and your family are eating, which is awesome as well. So very good reasons to try this at home. So let's look at this very simple procedure, like I said. Um, we need to start with milk. So the milk can be, do you want me to pause? No, there you go. Okay. So we need to start with milk. The milk can be, um, you can use a whole gallon or a half gallon, it just depends on how much yogurt you want to actually make. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that when you make that yogurt, you want to eat it within a week. So you want to make sure it's the amount that your family can actually eat within that time period. Um, the milk can be whole milk, it can be skim milk, it can be 1%, 2%, doesn't matter, just depends on what you want to start with. I like to start with whole milk because it gives me a little bit creamier texture at the end. So I started with a half a gallon of my whole milk. I'm heating it up on the stove, in this case a, a burner in the lab, but you would do this on your oven at home. You want to heat your milk up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to be very careful not to scald it, so heat it slowly, but you want to get up to that 180 degrees. And when you see that, you need to let the milk cool down to 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And this part is really important, so don't rush this, because if it's not cool enough, when I go to add the live cultures from my, my yogurt, it will kill it. So you want to make sure that it's cool enough to do that. So once you've confirmed that the temperature is cool enough and we're down to 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, so then what we want to do once this is cool enough is I'm going to take my yogurt sample. This can be, again, a yogurt that you buy from the store like this one, or it could be a yogurt uh, starter culture from a previous batch that you have made yourself. You want about a half cup of the yogurt, and we're going to mix that in to my cooled milk. So get as much of that as you can in there. And then we're going to stir that up, whisk it around. When you're done whisking and everything is mixed together completely, then you're going to take your milk and your yogurt product and put it into your vessel that you're going to incubate in. Your vessel could be anything. You could have a commercial um, yogurt maker like I have here, but you don't even need to have that. When I first started making my own yogurt, I actually used a crock pot. Um, you could use even just a pot, um, a glass bowl. It doesn't really matter. You can do this in anything. You're going to take your mixture of your yogurt and your milk and you're going to carefully, hopefully not spilling, pour into your vessel. In this case, I'm using again this commercial yogurt maker, which you do not need. I'm going to put my lid on top of here and this is going to go into my yogurt maker. I put my lid on. 
So I let mine go in the yogurt maker for about eight hours. You can go up to 12 hours. It totally depends um, on what kind of um, texture that you're looking for at the end. Um, if you're not using one of these, again, if you're just using a pot or a crock pot, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you heat it and incubate it at the right temperature. So it needs to incubate between 95 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the easy way to do that is turn your oven on to the lowest setting, which is 150 degrees Fahrenheit usually for, for most ovens. Turn it on and then turn it off. And then what you do is put your vessel in it overnight and let it sit overnight. And then when you bring it out in the morning, it will be perfectly fermented. You'll have your yogurt for you. So it's a really amazing process, very, very easy to do. So when you get done, you can actually eat the yogurt right away, or you can actually go through a second step, which I like to do, which is a straining process, which I'll show you. So once I get it out of my yogurt maker after my eight hour fermentation, I actually go through a second step, which is a straining process. And the reason I like to do that is I like to create a thicker product, um, which is more like a Greek yogurt. So if you're used to eating a thicker yogurt, you wanna do that. If you're okay with eating a little bit of a, um, a more watery type yogurt, then you would just eat it directly after you go through the fermentation. Now, again, this is a product that I purchased that you can use um, to strain your yogurt, but you don't even need that. If you don't want to purchase this, you can easily use a tea towel um, in a bowl, or you can use cheesecloth in a bowl. The main thing we want to do is actually create a little bit of a sieve so that the yogurt will sit on top, and then down at the bottom you can see I have let this strain overnight, and the liquid at the bottom is called whey. So on the top, this is all the yogurt that has been strained overnight, and it's a really nice thick texture, which I'll show you. Um, at the bottom, you can see all the liquid. All that liquid is called whey, W-H-E-Y, and that whey is full of protein. And the nice thing is you can actually use this whey for lots of other things. You can put it in smoothies for protein. You can actually boil pasta, soak beans. Anywhere you would use a liquid like a broth or water, you can use that whey in place of it. So you want to save that, and I save that as well. I usually put those into mason jars so I can keep them. So the yogurt that's left at the top, again, is the yogurt that I would put into containers. I put them into individual size containers. So again, um, four, six, eight containers, depending on how much you want per serving. Um, and you can see that it's a pretty thick product. Um, you can even use this in place of like sour cream on uh, baked potatoes, a lot of people are doing, um, which is really great too. And the nice thing is that you can doctor this up any way you want, right? You can put honey on it, granola, you can put strawberries, blueberries, you name it, right? To give a little bit of sugar to it. Um, but the, the amazing thing is you know exactly what's in this and all it, all it is is that milk that you fermented um, overnight and then strained. But it's even good plain, and I'll show you that it's pretty tasty. Very, very good. I love to eat this stuff. So think about this at home. When you're feeding your family, you want to do it cost-effectively. You also want to think about doing it in the most healthy way possible, and we can do that by creating our own foods at home in a very simple way. You don't even need any of this fancy stuff, right? All you need is the stuff that you have in your kitchen, which is really amazing. So it's a very easy and simple process and definitely not scary.